Hello there, this is Future Me, having just edited the video that you're about to watch. Uh, I wanted just to clarify quickly that this topic is specifically about history in a very broad sense, actually, including, I suppose, archaeology as an act of recording, remembering both personally and also on a societal level uh, what history is and, and why history therefore happens and exists. It's not the question that I posited a wee while ago, what is the point of archaeology, uh, to which I invited uh, video responses and continue to invite video responses, actually. I haven't forgotten about that. I have them in a file and we're working on, Andy and I, that is, are working on something for later this year in 2024, which will make use of this question of what is archaeology, what is the point of archaeology. Uh, this video is slightly different and it was inspired in a different way as well. So hopefully you enjoy it. Please do comment below. I want to see where the conversation goes. Uh, until next time, though, take care. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome back to another Archaeoscope. In this series, rather than you sending me a question to try and answer to the best of my ability, I have a question for you that I present in the form of a video that hopefully we can all go away, consider, think about, and comment below, and have a conversation that, that will result in ideas and notions that one of us on our own might not have considered and today's archaeoscope is going to be quite it's quite intensive i've got quite a lot of notes uh, but it's it's titled why is history hmm why is history uh, or i could have titled it mrs soup versus herodotus <laughs> because this all came out of a conversation that we uh, well, we began a few days ago when we started reading together a book called a history of the world in 50 lies and it's about you know misconceptions and preconceptions that we have uh, and for the most part have inherited about history that aren't necessarily precisely true and early on in the book herodotus the so-called father of western history is quoted and mrs soup as a former classicist and philologist scoffed she was like oh oh he's not a historian he never met a rumor he didn't like that man could not be trusted to to record accurate history if he had a had a ballista to his head but I kind of have come around to having a, 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 a more nuanced perspective on him. And over a, a cup of tea and a cake at a cafe, I sort of tried to sort of talk her down a little bit from that perspective. In so much as we have to consider what is history, or well, certainly what was history when he was doing it? Was it even a thing when he was doing it? He's called the father of history. But in that sense, did he know he was doing history? And two comparative words come to mind the first one being science science is a word of broadly speaking latin origin and <clears throat> kind of means to know today it's taken on connotations of seeking knowledge through experimentation seeking an emergent truth truth seeking but it means to know what can you know uh in terms of facts and what what is establishable and out of that came the scientific method and so on and so forth the second word is history or historia which is of greek origin and means inquiry it doesn't mean a story uh, per se it's an inquiry in its in its purest sense uh, a broader definition uh, in my notes is knowledge acquired through investigation which is interesting because so many archaeologists and historians that i know and so many of you guys watching this i'm sure are trivia snuffle pigs we find ourselves curious about almost anything there's in fact there's almost nothing that i can think of that i haven't sat down and gone oh tell me more when someone has said that they have a particular interest or that they have a particular job or that they're doing a particular thing i am incurably curious in that sense and i think this speaks to the power of trivia as well a lot of people who like trivia 
are history nuts. A lot of people who like history are uh, fans of little tidbits of knowledge that they like to share. And in that sense, I think more broadly, people like to share bits of knowledge, don't we? We like to, we like to, to bring something to the conversation. And uh, in that sense, that's what Herodotus was doing. He was inquiring and he was gathering knowledge. Now, this knowledge may have come from stories from sailors who said, oh, yes, I've heard that there's a land where men have no heads. They walk around with a face on their chest. And in other places, there are men who live in holes, who eat snakes and lizards, and for whom language sounds akin to the squeak of a bat. This is from Herodotus's histories, but he was working and living, I suppose, <laughs> more to the point, uh, between circa 484 and 425 BCE. Uh, he was 5th century BC, uh, gathering of knowledge by investigation. And crucially, this knowledge had no repeatability. You couldn't, you, you couldn't necessarily go and, and, and get the sailor to 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 find maybe the, the second hand account uh, and track that, that that person down and so on and so forth so repeatability was difficult and observation wasn't required personal observation herodotus didn't need to have seen this stuff for him to go yeah i'll uh, i'll write that down <laughs> so by his own standards by their own standards of their time people were doing history at the beginning of what we call history or rather hist the history gathering as it were and and this 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 whole thing of people liking to know things is crucial at this juncture they were doing it because people like to know things but people have always and will always like to know things anthropologically one of my favorite things about anthropology is that it's shown that the knowledge for us for homo sapiens has overtaken in many cases resources as a way of demonstrating um, ability. For example, you know, attractiveness is, is one of the key issues here, uh, but also uh, prowess in, in, uh, in our ability to achieve a set goal or to, uh, to, to look after people, so on and so forth. Material wealth and goods are crucial. This is one of the reasons why billionaires do surround themselves with, with, with with beautiful people and beautiful things but also so too is knowledge and uh, you know we've all heard knowledge is power but knowledge is quite literally a a, a a mental version a mental stimulus in that sense equivalent to the having of things and the ability also to pass things around to others to be generous with your knowledge in the same way that that powerful people in in the past powerful uh primates for example share resources it's not just us who do this it's also our some of our closest relatives on the planet so knowledge is power and uh this is also regardless of verifiability uh and therefore actually gossip is also power you don't need it to be true you just need to be a to be the font of that of that gossip of that that talking point to be the village uh b b gob basically <laughs> to be the place where people know they can get information and get some sort of insight that may give them a social advantage in some way or that just st again stimulates that part of the brain that goes "Ooh, tell me more uh gossip is as powerful in that sense as knowledge regardless of ver verifiability as i say that's the point really now meanwhile while our brains were doing this over the course of, of millions of years, so certainly the past hundred thousand years, uh, or well, yeah, two hundred thousand years maybe, um, history in the past, I don't know, five, six thousand years, versions of history, oral stories, and then eventually written history, became a record that we came to rely on, one that we consider and more to the point for the most part need to be true now this can be a personal need i believe that my father or my father's father's father was so and so um it can also be and it also is a uh, a broader social need for it to be true uh we need to know who we are 
so that we know how we relate to others. We need, we feel that we need to know who owns things so that we know where we are in a socio-economic pecking order. And more literally, names, places, legitimacy of birth, ownership of property and identity are all tied up in this this notion of history as as a as a true thing as in that sense a verified record no matter how it came to us we now i would say modern people people who have the concept of post uh i don't know post victorian modernity uh have a have a have a a, a, possibly even an addiction to the idea that history is fixed that our knowledge of history is a truth that in some cases we hold on to with all of the 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 fervor of someone who holds on to a myth about their identity if we can look at dna and the dna might be able to tell us something we hold that to be a truth and it's and it's crucial to us and as i say that goes from us personally all the way through up to society society level society scale in that sense not least politically as well every single day politicians use an idea of the past to communicate an idea about the present and therefore a vision for the future it's comparative in its relation to history and in in its relationship to identity and shared notions of what you know what we hope for and what we hope for more often than not is based on what we have now which more often than not we are told is based on what we have done previously are you with me (laughs) so it's interesting that 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 this is the case for example caesar must be real i don't i'm not questioning the fact that whether or not caesar is real rome isn't real it always blows my mind talking to people who have invested their lives in the study of ancient rome because y'all don't seem to realize it didn't exist it was bread and circuses it's a circus man no no i'm really not no uh but but nonetheless those documents his his diaries for example his his reports from from the gaulish wars have passed through many hands over the years and this doesn't mean that that what they say isn't accurate but we are we are acting in good faith and on uh, the understanding of good faith when we consider what to be history for example quotable history so even even if even if you have no problem with the existence of caesar himself did he say the things that are attributed to him well we have to consider that to be the case because we we trust those documents and we trust that the people who who were working with them did their best now an interesting example there um is uh for example in the story of beowulf i'm hopping about a little bit here but in the story of beowulf um uh, grendel the monster is described as being the kin of cain uh now that's clearly a biblical reference and it's a reference that probably the monk who transcribed the story had uh, had a, a strong sense of and maybe even the person who telling him the story had that cultural as- association and connotation but it's unlikely that Cain was mentioned in the original version of that tale that was passed down through all oral tradition uh, over the course of, of hundreds of years perhaps so is this, is this ability then to sort of seek out where are the biases where are the the problems uh, with with the gossip tendency of history uh where is the verifiability and um and how can we have a better history therefore um one that that not so much is more accurate but one that that has annotations that says maybe just just consider this bit as as with a pinch of salt until there's more evidence this this is a crucial aspect here because we do run the risk don't we when we ask this question why is history the way it is what is history how does it work uh, and can we trust it that we open the door fling it wide open to pseudo archaeology i'm talking about obviously graham hancock and, and co and 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 also more dangerous uh, fringe beliefs about racial purity uh even the very shape of the planet <laughs> um 
well, the, the, these these questions aren't so total as to as to make those inquiries legitimate. We still have ways of asserting uh, standards of, of evidence and proof. It's just a matter of having that nuanced, gentle relationship with the past. That that's not something that we're holding on to desperately uh, and and with certainty. We we hold it so that we can pass it on to other people and we do our best as we have it to see it clearly um and i guess the crux of this whole thing mrs soup versus herodotus uh he's not a real historian is to ask well what is a historian in that sense what is an archaeologist what is our role today in doing history and in 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 that question of why is history why is it a thing why do we do it why is it important and why is it important that it's done uh in good faith and as 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 well as we can manage and the reason why i'm why i'm wording it like that is that i suspect my final note here is that historians and archaeologists purpose is to find new find new evidence dig up new stuff find new documents add to the knowledge to advise people who are curious to help them to be accessible to the to the public and to aid in assessment of history and to help people to have an understanding of 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 the history that that, that they're combing through to seek answers about all of these things to do with names places legitimacy ownership identity politics etc etc uh we all love knowing things and I, it's not about quality control, but it is, I suppose, about being able to explain why it is that we do history the way we do, because it's the best way that we can move towards something of understanding what actually happened in the past. But it is ultimately a story, and it is ultimately kind of gossip. Uh, although hopefully gossip with with more verifiability than uh, than someone leaning over a fence just going oh did you know they didn't know that so and so had uh, you know ate a muffin this morning oh <laughs> um, yeah what do you think what do you think of these of these thoughts and ideas as ever I'm just bringing things together plugging them together they're stimulating thoughts and, and questions and uh, I I want to know what you think comment below uh, let's see see where it goes i am as ever curious about this question and just to reiterate i'm curious from the standpoint of best practice i don't uh i do not and never have thought that it's our role as archaeologists as historians to be gatekeepers to tell people no you shall not pass into this archive if that this is our stuff you just ask me a question and i'll you know that's like a medieval priest translating the bible for for his um the latin bible for his uh his his uh, parishioners no it, it's more how can we we work with people who are legitimately curious about the past to 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 to, to show this good faith relationship with what is spotty what is not certain what is especially in the case of prehistoric archaeology people basically in a cave no pun intended we know we're walking in the dark with a torch and we're doing our best to illuminate how people might have behaved and lived and thought and loved and fought in the past we don't know things for certain but that doesn't mean that we're not useful anyway guys thank you so much for watching please do comment below please do keep the comments uh, respectful and, uh, and 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 you know uh, productive con you know contribute to, to the discussion and until next time do take care bye bye just in case they blow off Ha, 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 ha.